Alex, there are a lot of good teams in the nation. We, we saw Michigan win. Stony Brook went to the World Series a couple of years ago. There's so many good teams around the country. Why should – and I, I ask you this, and I've asked a lot of coaches this. What makes James Madison different from all the big-time schools? What, what draws people to go to James Madison? Obviously, the facility and everything like that. But if I was a player right now, and I was standing right there, and I say, listen, Alex, it, I, I've looked at Michigan. I've looked at Stony Brook. I've looked at Hofstra, whatever. All the top um, college baseball organizations. Why should I go to James Madison? If you were to sell me right now, what would it be? Well, I think, number one, it's, 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 a, it's a two-fold question there because mm-hmm. you're, you're talking about it's tough for us to compare to a school like a Michigan, mm-hmm. a school like a Power 5 school because – at the end of the day, like let's not lie and, and BS each other. Those Power Five schools have have things that we just flat out cannot offer. Number one, you play in a Power Five conference. Number two, you might have some more some more fluff, you know, some more um, resources that we that we may not have. What I will say about JMU is, in my opinion, I've had, I've had the opportunity to work at two other schools. I worked at University of Central Florida, and I worked at Radford, and both were programs where we were very high level. I can tell you that JMU is the total package as far as everything that you're getting, campus size, the quality education, the campus atmosphere, social life, um, and the athletic culture that our entire, all of our programs have of winning and doing things the right way. And then specifically within our baseball program, I mean, we have everything that you could possibly ask for within our means. I mean, we have technology on on the development side, on our field, in our cages, on our computer to make our player put our players in the best possible position to be successful. When it comes to traveling on the road, you know, everybody's eats like better than you would in the minor leagues. <laughs> um, you're staying in nicer hotels than you would in the minor leagues. Um, and the support that we have, our support staff is tremendous. Like I said earlier, like to have at the mid-major level four people that work with your with your baseball program only and do not share with anybody else, that's a, that's a huge resource. If our guys need to get treatment around their class schedule at 10 o'clock in the morning, right. John, our trainer, is in there ready to go for them. If they need to schedule a lift at a different time because of their schedule, our strength coach, Robbie, is, is there for them. If they need a piece of equipment, Pete's there for them all, all day long. Um, and, and it's – I think those are the things that are – that really matter, the people that are coaching you, the t- people that are supporting you, and, and, and the tools that you have to, to make you the best player and student. And, and we have all, all those things. Alex, you sold me. So where's my scholarship? Yes. You sold me. I am an outfielder. I'm 38 years old. I've got an athletic ability. I've got a lot of power. You want you want to draft me over there? You want to bring me over there? <laughs> you got it. The only thing is that we just don't have we don't have any more scholarships. So still learning after that because a lot of times once we get that conversation, everybody goes, "Oh, well, I don't. If you really like me, then you'd pay me," which I can't blame them. So much. We are talking to James Madison baseball assistant head coach and recruiting uh, coordinator Alex Guerra. In terms of the transfer portal that we've seen in a lot of other college sports, especially with basketball, both men's and women's, after the hiatus of their particular seasons, there's now a transfer portal rule that grants instant eligibility. You don't have to sit out a year like you normally did in the past. What are your thoughts to that? Do you think it would be a good change for baseball if they went forward with it? Because I think they have something next year where they can go forward with that in the 2021 season. Are you in favor of that, or would you want it to stick to where you have to sit out a year? A loaded question right there. You're asking the tough ones tonight. Well, you know what it is. Sure. It, his nickname is Speedy Petey. So that's why he, he makes sure he gets a lot of words out in He's his question. Yeah, he is. It's a great question. <laughs> it's a great question. Uh, I think it should go based on based on the individual. I think if – and somewhat already this way, if you're on scholarship, or if you're not on scholarship, and you are asked to leave the program because you are not good enough, which happens the majority of the time, you should have instant 
eligible. You should not be punished because the coaching staff made a mistake and brought you in when you were not good enough to be at that at that place. If you are an All American at JMU and you want to go get free agent and go to LSU or West Virginia because those schools happen to not do their job and recruit you, then I'm completely against it because I don't want to have to recruit our players every year and have it like basketball where they're sitting in a room and you're, and you're doing a PowerPoint to recruit your players so that they don't leave. I don't, I have no interest in doing that. However, if the kid is being punished, coach, a coaching change, um, I don't want to say punished, but if the kid is put in a situation, if, if, if it's not in the best interest of the student athlete for them to um, pursue other things because the, the coach is no longer giving them that opportunity, they should be able to play right away. But I just don't, I don't think it should become free agency where you have a really good year and then all of a sudden you're, you're exploring your options. It's not fair. I just don't think it would be fair to us as a coaching staff that in my opinion, does things the right way and recruits to what we need, not over-recruit, and now you're sitting here and we're going to be running around in summer ball leagues um, trying to steal our, other people's players. Like, that's not what college athletics is all about, in my opinion. And I'll be honest, like, if that – like, if somebody would, would try to do that, and, like, I'm going to be very upset. If somebody would try to steal our best player – after his freshman year, you're going to get in some uncomfortable situations on the road. <laughs> People are going to be saying things, and who knows what could happen. You have a, you got to, you got to think about it like this too. Like, think if you're at a power five school, a lower power five school, and you got a bunch of kids on that team that are doing really well. Oh, we 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 lost Alex there, guys. We're going to call him back up. It was an accident. <laughs> You there? That was that was our fault, Alex. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. I'm sorry. Right. You got a, you know you got a bunch of guys that are lower level, you know mid or power five school that are having some really good, having really good years, and now they want to go and, and be a part of a blue blood, top tier, going to the college world series every year program. Like those guys at the power five school, they get fired because now they don't have good enough players. You know, so it, it, it's it's a tricky and touchy subject because then, mm. the, the, you know, then the, the follow-up is, well, a coach can then go from, you know, a, a mid-major to a power five school. I agree with that. I, I understand that part of it. That's why a kid should get a fresh start if that coaching change happens. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to coaching, it's also a profession. It's also an occupation. And if – a coach has an opportunity to better his family because he's going to be making more money and he's in a better situation than what he is. And that's between the coach and his family. Um, and it's a really tricky thing because if you, if you open this up, it's going to become, you look at it like football, and basketball, it's like free agency. And, and it's just, I don't know. I think it's fortunately in baseball, we don't have that culture of, of, of it just yet, but man, I, I that would be my stance on it, you know, for for right now, unless somebody, unless this goes in and, and it can somehow work, but that's my opinion on the situation. We are talking to James Madison baseball head coach and recruiting coordinator Alex Guerra. Alex, I want to get into some MLB conversation. I know you are a baseball player slash coach slash everything. And as you look at the Houston Astros, and I've asked every single baseball coach we have spoken to in the last three weeks, and we've had Coach Week practically. We're talking about Power 5 schools. We've talked to so many baseball coaches. I want to know your input. When, when you look at the Houston Astros, you look at the MLB, you look at Rob Manford, and I'll tell you, Rob Manford has really cost himself a, a big argument, not only uh, for fans, but for some of the owners. Do you think they were right not fining or 
suspending some of the players after this whole situation with the cheating uh, that the Astros performed in 2017, 2018, and 2019? I think if they suspended the players, they would have suspended the entire Astros organization. <laughs> you know, so it, it's, in my opinion, I think that the way that, the only way for them to get the truth about what actually happened was for them to give the players immunity. Because the union is not was not going to allow any player to go in there on their heels and like in my opinion the players union protected the players and they did a great job with it um and i think rob manford had he had a he had to make a decision I mean, he had to decide you know are, are we going to get half the truth and then i'm going to have to go in there and then i'm going to have to suspend players and coaches and gms and what i think might happen or what i or what i thought happened or do do i want to get the truth, make a harsh statement to the people that were in charge and leading and saying, this is what you can or cannot do. And it's almost like the players were, were for the kids and the children and the manager and the GM are the parents. Well, if the parents let the children run amok and do whatever, like, is it really their fault? Like not, not for anything. If I'm out, if I'm Jose Altuve, and I'm facing a Raldis Ch- Chapman, bottom of the ninth inning, with the opportunity to go to the World Series, and somebody's going to buzz me in and tell me when he's going to throw a slider, and I'm not going to get caught for I haven't been caught just yet, and enough, everything's cool. Like, I have a tough time saying no in that situation. <laughs> so I mean, I'm, it, but that's just me being brutally honest. I got you. I'm not saying I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or indifferent. Right. But they made a decision. And the people that were in charge of allowing it to happen were the people that, in my opinion, should have been punished. The players, they're going to have to live with the fact that they cheated the game. And um, they're going to have to live with that stain on them for the rest of their career. Oh, I was a World Series champion, but. Oh, I won the MVP, but. And they're going to have to live with that pressure and and everything anybody Speaks of Jose Altuve, Alex Bregman, Carlos Carrera. They're always going to follow that up with, "Oh yeah, he was the cheater. He, he was part of the the Astros cheating scandal." So I think that might be a little bit more difficult for them to deal with than them just being suspended and them doing their time and and uh, coming back and everybody you know kind of feeling sorry. They're, they're going to have to wear it for the rest of their career that they, that they cheated, but. I also think, in fairness, this is this has been going on in baseball forever. Of course, they just got caught mm-hmm. because they're. I mean, in my opinion, the way they did it, they're just stupid. They're too much. They're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> you could say banging on garbage pails in the dugout. They're yeah, stupid. It was just too obvious. It got, <laughs> to point where, it got to the point where it was just really it was just too obvious, and eventually somebody was going to speak up about it, and, and that's what happened. But even if you look into the, the Astros had like a, a video tribute at the end of the year, and, and you could see, you know, the guys running through the tunnel and they're videoing and they're all fired up after they won. I don't remember what playoff game it was, and you see the TV there, and you see the the, the garbage can, you see the table, you see somebody sitting there spitting seeds for nine innings. Like, clean that up, maybe hide it up a little bit better. I, I'm not advocating for it. I'm just saying it's. They deserve to get caught, and the people that got punished, I think, I think that they deserved the punishment that they got.